Well, the JT build is officially underway, and before I drive it down to my buddy's shop where most of the parts are stored and we really dive in, I wanna share with you guys a few things we've done to the JT in preparation for this build, particularly the S-Pod install and the Vector uh, E-Dock install, and share some tips and tricks that might be helpful if you're installing an S-Pod in your rig. Hey everybody, welcome to 4 by trail I'm Caleb, and uh, before we dive into the S-Pod install, finally the shipment from Next Venture uh, has arrived. Check out some of this armor. This stuff is beefy, it's thick, it's lightweight, it's got the nice countersunk mounting points there. Um, this is just part of the full belly skid system. It's full aluminum from Next Venture and not sponsored by these guys, but man, they make some awesome products and uh, really, really easy to work with. Great communication. Uh, really happy with uh, just working with those guys. So check them out if you're looking at some armor for your rig. Uh, cannot wait to get this thing down to my buddy's shop. The next episode will be in his shop where we're diving in. And uh, as you guys know, full axle swap, long arm uh, swap, uh, four and a half inch suspension, uh, 40s, you know, the PSC steering, a lot of stuff. So full build uh, series kicking off with today's video. First of all, with the E-Dock install, um, they have you lower the windshield, uh, which you really do need to do. And it also helps when you're installing the S-Pod um, for routing the data cable up into the cab of the Gladiator. So lowering your windshield is gonna be a must. And the first thing there is when it comes to removing the windshield wipers themselves, uh, if, it's, if you haven't removed those already, um, they're gonna be pretty tight, at least mine were, and I've heard that others have had the same experience. Um, so for me, I ended up using a little puller um, that was able to not put a lot of stress on the mechanics of the windshield wiper system. Some people say just give them a good yank and kind of uh, rock them back and forth, and they'll eventually make their way off. Mine were very tight, and I didn't wanna risk you know, damaging the me mechanism of the windshield wipers themselves. So I just used this little puller. It worked fantastic. Uh, you can get them at your auto parts store and I'll leave a link below as well. Now the first uh, mistake I made was underestimating how easy it is to lose your grip on these little um, button head bolts that they give you uh, that go into the dash um, itself when you're connecting the e-dock to the dash. And as you can see right here, definitely slipped out of my hand and uh, disappeared into the abyss of the dash. I heard it kind of fall down in there <laughs> and there was no finding it. So quick run to Ace Hardware to get the replacement. Once the EDOC was installed, I noticed on the ends, no matter how I adjusted it, um, the, the ends tend to kind of dig their way into the dash a bit. That's kind of a negative in my opinion. I, I would like for the whole dock to be elevated off of the surface of the dash just a little bit. Um, not really a big deal though. It's, it'd be easy enough to slide a little piece of felt under there if I was concerned about it puncturing the leather or anything like that. I don't think it's really a big deal. While the windshield was down, I went ahead and installed the S-Pod as well. Um, routing the wires over to the battery, uh, super easy. Something that you might consider doing uh, what I did, which is mounting them outside of the little chase way there is for the other wire loom, for the, the primary wire loom for the vehicle. It runs in this plastic um, kind of housing above the firewall there. And I thought at first, man, I'm gonna open that up. And it proved to be a bit of a hassle to try and start getting in there. The clips were real stubborn. And I don't think there is even necessarily room. It might save you some time and hassle to just run them the way I did. Now, I chose to mount the S-Pod onto the Vector E-Dock. S-Pod also sells a mount for the controller that goes into the grab handle here on the A-pillar. And it looks like from the pictures, it might block the air vent here a little bit. And I might still try that, um, only because finding the right position for the S-Pod, even with all the options of this E-Dock, uh, at least with the RAM arm and the limited mobility, it was hard to find a position that I'm 100% happy with. I like where I'm, I have it here. I think this is the best option, in my opinion, for mounting it on the E-Dock, um, but it does block a little visibility when you're looking across the windshield, which I don't love. 
For now though, I like it here and I'm gonna run with it for a bit and see what all I end up mounting on the e-dock to kind of make that call from there if I end up needing to move the controller or not. I chose some RAM mounts to go into the Vector e-dock and I will say that uh, Vector makes the ball that is able to go into the slot on the e-dock without removing sections of the e-dock. Whereas the RAM mounts, you have to remove the set screw and the bracketry and pull off the, uh, a piece of the e-dock to get that RAM ball mount in there. Uh, so it's a little more of a hassle to use RAM products with the Vector. Some of you may wonder why I chose the um, button version of the S-Pod controller versus like a touchscreen, because that's pretty popular now as well. I read that the touchscreen is not um, heat sensitive, it's pressure sensitive, so you do have to give it a good push even on the touchscreen. And with the hot temperatures here in Arizona, I, I didn't want any issues with the screen itself since it's sitting up there in the sun. I also prefer the tactile feel of buttons or switches for something like this, especially with um, it controlling the e-lockers for the front and rear uh, UD60s on the Gladiator. That's going to be huge, and that's why I wanted an S-Pod to begin with, something quality that's going to actually control the lockers, right? And I like being able to push the button, see it light up, know that it is engaged or disengaged. Um, I think the touchscreen is a great option for some people, but for me, I prefer this silicone button. Well, yeah, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, you know, there's a lot of options when it comes to controllers and mounting options inside of a Jeep like this. For me, I think this clean, simple setup is going to work well. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the S-Pod controller placement and uh, some things that you've been installing on your e-dock, if you have one of these, uh, just to give me some ideas for the future. Uh, so pumped to keep going with this build. This is just the beginning, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon in the next video.